So yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us. So today, as Tom outlined, I will be discussing um, mostly composite products, but I'll also be giving a brief update on some other um, DAFM uh, policy positions. Perfect. So I'll be covering composite products in relation to a, a few specific points that have been causing issues, and also three short updates, and they'll be in the areas of hay and straw imports, um, a sort of a quick overview of personal consignment rules, which also relate to e-commerce, and also VET15 licenses, which are specific licenses in relation to research and diagnostic. So in composite products, then, as I said, we'll be looking at, at areas that have been uh, creating difficulties and also where we've been receiving quite a lot of queries in relation to products. And hopefully this will clear up a few, a few areas. So these include determining if a product can be classified as a composite, um, what the requirements for import of composite products are, and which composite products require official controls and which require a health search versus a private attestation. So to start with then, back to the, the basic, what is a composite product? And we know from the definition, it is a foodstuff that is intended for human consumption, and it has to contain both processed product of animal origin and plant product. And those are the key points really, that it has to be processed uh, product of animal origin. So it also has to be for human consumption. So things like pet food or other products for animal consumption, such as um, joint supplements for dogs, they're excluded from a composite product uh, definition. It also excludes products containing raw product of animal origin. So for example, uncooked prawns that are in a pastry shell. It also doesn't cover products with a plant product, it's only there for technical purposes. So for example, as an emulsifier, or if the plant product only adds specific characteristics, so for example, color, flavoring, sweetness, or bulk, et cetera. So if, if the plant product has to be there and um, be a significant portion and significant element of the product in order for it to be classified as a composite. So just to try and uh, create some definition as to what an unprocessed and what a processed product of animal origin is, I put them into two different columns. So we can see that things like raw meat or meat preparations, um, raw milk, raw fishery products, and eggs or liquid egg are all considered unprocessed product of animal origin. Whereas meat products, for example, the salami or the pepperoni on the pizza there, or the ham in that sandwich, they're considered a processed meat product. Um, and same applies to heat treated milk. So is it pasteurized or UHT, or even if it's undergone a significant processing, such as a yogurt or cheese, they're all considered processed product of animal origin. The same applies to fishery. So again, like a cooked prawn would be a processed fishery product, or an example of an egg product would be, again, pasteurized egg yolk, or um, again, cooked egg. The ingredients are also critically important to assess, to determine whether um, the product is a composite. And again, it's, it's impossible to classify a product type and one really good example would be ice cream. So there's two examples here. And the one on the left would be considered dairy product because we can see that the plant product in it is only contained for technical or flavoring purposes. In comparison, the product on the right is a composite because the plant product in it substantially alters the composition of that product. The same applies to food supplements, which are a common area that we receive multiple queries in. So first of all, the gelatin capsule does not count towards determination of the product. So it cannot be counted as a product of animal origin in the product. It's the capsule filling that we're interested in and what we consider. So for example, the far left there, the fish oil that we have, this is considered a fishery product and requires a fishery search and um, official controls. If, they, if those fish oils are mixed with a plant product, which is an integral part of that product, for example, this evening primrose oil mixed with fish oil, then that can be considered a composite product. The third example then on the right is where there is absolutely no product of animal origin inside the capsule. Then that is not a composite product, but that product also does not require official controls. So the second thing we need to look at in relation to composites is, is does the establishment where the composite product is coming from, does it need to be approved or does it just need to be registered? And really we need to look at what processing goes on in that establishment. If there is significant processing of the product of animal origin, 
now not including the processing required to produce the composite product then the establishment must, must be approved so for example a milk is brought in raw milk it is then pasteurized that pasteurized milk is then added to a cake mixture and cooked that establishment would have to be approved whereas if the pasteurized milk is just brought in to an establishment and added to a product which is then cooked that establishment only needs to be registered because it isn't significant additional processing of that product of animal origin. We also need to look at um, the listing requirements for the third country where the composite product originates. And that really depends on the risk that the composite product presents. So we have three different categories. If the composite product contains meat or colostrum based products, which are considered high risk, then the country of origin must be listed to for export to the EU of either the meat or the colostrum based products as relevant. If we have a non shelf stable composite product, which is the sort of middle risk, then the country of origin must be listed for each product of animal origin within that composite. And then for the lowest risk composite products, which are shelf stable that don't contain meat or colostrum based products, then the country of origin must be listed for export of either meat or dairy or fish or eggs. But in addition to this listing, there's also a requirement which was brought in in the legislation brought in in April that the exporting third country must be listed for each product of animal origin in this decision 2011-163 which relates to residues. And you'll see a note there with or without a footnote and what that means is in the listing in this, in this um, decision the country can either have a residue plan or it can apply to the commission saying we only use product of animal origin from EU member states or from listed third countries and then the EU lists them with a footnote but they still have to apply to the commission and have to be listed for us to permit that composite product into the EU. So the next section we'll look at then is, is does my composite product require official controls? And, and by official controls, I'm referring to the pre-notification, the submission of a shed on traces, and the presentation um, of the product to DAFM at the BCP of arrival. So regulation 2021-632, which is our positive list, this lists all animals and animal products that require official controls. However, there are some exceptions for low risk composite products. And those exemptions are listed in the annex to regulation 2021-630. And you can see them on the right hand side there. So we have the CN codes on the left and the explanation on the right. So if the product, if your product falls into this category, it is a composite product and also complies with the, art, the requirements of article three, which are it's shelf stable, there's no meat or colostrum um, and it's packaged and labeled for human consumption then that product is exempt from official controls. So it does not need a shed, it does not need to be presented and it should not be added to a shed. They still require private attestation, but we'll discuss that at a later stage. So then the final piece on composites is in relation to this certification versus private attestation. So we know that the old rules had uh, rules relating to percentage of product of animal origin and they determined whether it required certificate or not um, and in addition there was the article 6 requirements so all that percentage and the article 6 requirements are gone and they've been replaced by a risk-based categorization depending on the content and the shelf stability of the composite product and the three categories are as we discussed earlier non-shelf stable composite products containing meter colostrum and then the low risk shelf stable which do not contain meter colostrum so for the um, higher risk categories the top two they require a health certificate and the model is model comp, which is chapter 50 of regulation 2022-235. And there is still a transition period prior to which the animal health law comes into effect. So the old certs under reg 28-2012 can still be used up to the 15th of March next year if they're signed before the 15th of January. The lower risk than our shelf stable composites that don't contain meat or colostrum they can come in on a private attestation and that's in accordance with the model in Annex 5 of the same regulation 2022-235. Now there was a number of queries about what shelf stable means and the definition is it has to be transported and stored under controlled temperature but the Commission have provided guidance saying that products um, which are transported at controlled temperatures for quality purposes 
So for example, molten chocolate, which is transported warm for quality, or for example, frozen pastries, which are then served at room temperature, they can be considered shelf stable. And we urge everyone to send product details to import controls at agriculture.gov.ie for assessment. So there's no confusion at the BCP when these products are brought in on private attestations. So finally, which needs to accompany? Um, with the certification, the original health cert has to accompany the composite product at the BCP, whereas the private attestation is not an official document. So either the original or an electronic copy of the original, so for example, a scanned copy of the signed original can accompany the consignment. For those exempt composite products, the private attestation should be available at the time of placing on the market and doesn't need to travel with the load. So there is more information available at gov.ie um, and also if you have any queries, we'll try and answer them at the end of this session. So I'm now going to try and provide a short update on other policy pieces. And the first is in relation to um, hay and straw imports. So hay and straw are what we call non-harmonized products, which means there's no set EU certification um, or rules, but they are listed under Reg 2021-632, our positive list which means that we have to apply national rules to the import. And the risk related to these products is the possibility of transmissible animal disease being present on the product. And as such, it can only come from certain low risk third countries with a high health status. And that list is there on the right hand side of the screen. And it's also available on our webpage under hay and straw imports. So for these products, normal conditions apply, i.e. there's um, submission of a shed on traces, pre-notification, and uploading of the relevant, relevant documents to the imports portal. The national rules are changing in relation to the documentation required. So up till now, we've needed a declaration signed by a commissioner of oats or a member of the competent authority of the third country of export. But we're now looking to um, have a completed commercial document instead. And there is a modifiable template available on the website, and that needs to accompany the consignment at the BCP. So this is the uh, new model commercial document that has to accompany the consignment. Um, some parts that are optional, depending on how the load is packaged. So for example, the batch number is only needed where you've got a packaged hay or straw product where it's available. And that number is to assist with the identity. checks at the BCP. The document can be signed either by the exporter or an agent. Point then, I'd like to raise some awareness about um, what is permitted as a personal consignment and this includes either in your luggage coming from a third country or as an e-commerce parcel that you order from a third country. So the relevant regulation is regulation 2019-2122 and this states that no milk and no meat or meat products are permitted to be brought in as personal consignments from a third country. The import of such goods has to be imported as a commercial movement through a BCP with the relevant import procedure and certification. There is also going to be rejection of products where an animal health risk is considered. For example, a recent example would be cow's urine from India that was found um, in personal luggage. So the annex to this regulation provides a list of prohibited CN codes. Um, and if those codes are seen in, in e-commerce products, they will be stopped and rejected. So there is a derogation to the milk and meat rule, and that's provided for specific food types, and they are infant formula, infant food, and food for special medical purposes. In addition, pet food for health-related reasons of the pet is also included. So for all these derogated products, two kilos is permitted, which is either per parcel or in a traveler's luggage. For all other products which have a product of animal origin in them, a weight limit is applicable. Most of them are two kilos, but for some, there are higher limits. For example, there's 20 kilos permitted of certain fishery products. It's just really important to note as well that these imports must be for personal consumption. If we see a certain volume going to a commercial address, that would be considered a commercial import and would be also rejected. So finally, a quick note on BET15 licenses, which are licenses required to accompany research and diagnostic samples, which are exempt from official controls. 
So companies apply for a VET15 license to the department and we apply certain import conditions to that movement. They include the movement must be through either Dublin Port or Dublin Airport or Shannon Airport. A copy of the relevant license needs to accompany the product and the license and an Annex 1 document should be sent to whatever location um, the import is intended through 24 hours prior to the import. So how the process works is as follows. An import declaration is made to revenue on which the CN code of the product is included. If these, this CN code is listed in our positive list, then that consignment is yellow routed to DAFM for controls. The clearance agent sends, sends an email to the BCP of entry requesting that the consignment be cleared because it has a VET15 license. But in order to facilitate this clearance and to match up the license with the MRN of the, of the product, we would request that a copy of that VET15 license be uploaded by the clearing agent with that clearing email, and this will greatly speed up the clearance process at the BCP. So that's a bit of a whistle stop tour of a few, a few updates. Um, thank you very much for your attention. For any future general queries, please contact Brexit Call at agriculture.gov.ie who will forward them on to the relevant area. There's also significantly more information available on our website at the address there. So thank you very much for your attention.